Hey everybody, I'm Taylor. Hey, I'm Matt. And we're doing uh, episode two of this podcast series where Matt has had this awesome opportunity to go to Dubai. And uh, I'm kind of tagging along vicariously, bringing, bringing myself along to experience it with him. So Matt, we've got, a, we've got a full agenda of interesting questions to ask you today. Why don't you just go ahead and start us off and, and tell us how you're feeling today. Like, where are you? Look, It's looking like you're in a pretty cool area. I am absolutely stoked right now. I am in downtown Dubai at the infamous Burj Khalifa. It is absolutely massive. I can't even fit the whole thing into, uh, into the camera angle. Um, but the Burj Khalifa is situated right here in front of the Dubai fountains. And right behind me is uh, the Dubai Mall. I'm not gonna be uh, too bold and start walking around a lot because I might use the Wi-Fi. And uh, it was a constant battle this morning to try to find the Wi-Fi. First world problem, but uh, we're making it work. All right, well, we appreciate it. Better a first world problem than a worst world problem. Let's go ahead and get started on uh, question number one. So how, are, how have your classes been? Have you been uh, staying true to the form with your first goal of um, being outstanding in the classroom? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, this week, um, I had two quizzes. Um, the first one was in management and organizational behavior. Um, it re went really well. I'm feeling really good about it. Um, the second one was a little more difficult. It was in business law. Um, and the class that I'm taking covers kind of the UAE law more specifically, so it's very specialized. Um, that quiz was a little more difficult, um, but I gave it my best shot, and I'm uh, interested to uh, see the results that'll probably be posted next week. The UAE law sounds really interesting. I wonder how uh, it differs from the law that we're used to. Does, does that incorporate any kind of like religious tradition or any kind of like um, like ultra conservative type of stuff that we wouldn't? really know much about here in the states yeah yeah i mean some of it is just like very similar to u.s law um there's a lot of a lot of things lay parallel um but when it comes to um kind of muslims dealing with muslims there's a separate court um and they use a lot of kind of their religious traditions and beliefs to kind of guide that whole process but for example if i was to get into some sort of a dispute um, with a Muslim, we wouldn't go to the Muslim court because I'm not Muslim. We would just go to the um, official kind of UAE um, court. Well, let's hope that you don't get into any trouble and have to experience that firsthand. But if you do, that'd be very convenient for our listeners to be able to have that insight. So, you know, whatever, whatever you feel like doing. All right. So um, I've been just foaming at the mouth every time I go and check out the Instagram, man, because it is just awesome, these pics that, you, that you're posting on there. Um, I really enjoyed one of the most recent ones of, of your buddy, um, and I, I don't want to butcher his name, so I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but it looks like he was having, you guys were having a good time out at a club or a bar or something. Uh, maybe tell us a little, little about that and how, you know, how uh, alcohol was involved in that somehow because here in the states we all know that alcohol doesn't exist in the Middle East so maybe you can correct our our uh, <laughs> our false beliefs here yeah so contrary to popular belief alcohol does exist in the UAE um, it is just very scarce um, it's not like you can just go down to the gas station and buy a 40 um, or a six pack um, one of my friends um, who I met at the university his name's Jordan um, he's from France, really cool guy, total homie. Um, we're quickly becoming close friends. Um, the other night, um, he texted me and he was like, hey man, like, um, like, do you wanna come over and hang out? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And he's like, uh, my friends have like rented out a VIP section at a club downtown. Like, would you like to come? You're totally invited. And I was just like, hell yeah, like that sounds totally sick. And so, um, I winded up meeting up with him um, and he had already kind of like organized everything. And so we took a taxi um, with two other guys and then like these three chicks to the downtown area of Dubai. Show up to this club and it was like something out of a movie. There's like this six foot six, like 300 pound, like Nigerian bouncer standing like at this little like special section. And Jordan walks up to him and he's like, hey, like we're here to see Instant Ball. And, uh, 
and the dude's like, all right, let me see your IDs. So we show him our IDs and he's like, you can go through and he takes back like the little like red velvet, like rope or whatever you want to call it. And we go up this flight of stairs and there's like this balcony and our buddy Instant Ball um, was there and he was already like pretty fired up. He was probably a few shots deep. He looked like he wasn't enjoying himself. Um, but we, we like we walk into this club and Instant Ball like leads us over to like his section and they just have like bottles of Ciroc everywhere like every 15 minutes like these chicks would come out with like these trays of shots and they would have like these like little like sparkling fireworks things and like be waving them around and stuff and Instant Ball is just like going hog wild he's just like running around singing dancing like great atmosphere great energy trevor baldwin if you're watching this dude you would have been in your element my friend you would have absolutely loved it so that was the big adventure it was like on a tuesday night um and i had class the next morning but fortunately um it was uh it was just an awesome experience and i was still able to get a good night's sleep afterwards and i was ready to rock and roll in the morning so you proved that uh you know going to in the Middle East, they do have alcohol, and not only that, but you can you can be a mature consumer of alcohol as well, and so it might be our most valuable export as the mature consumption of alcohol. So um, another another interesting uh, post that you had on on Instagram was a picture of a of a camel shepherd. Um, maybe speak to that that post. Maybe elaborate on that a uh, little little tidbit of of Middle Eastern intrigue. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So when I'm not in the VIP section with Jordan and Istanbul, I'm out running in the Arabian desert. And to be quite honest, it gets pretty lonely. I'm out there for like two to two and a half hours at a time. And it's usually just like me, myself and I, I'll have some tunes playing, just like reflect on my time here. But um, the other day when I was out running, I made it over like this giant sand dune. And like right before me, there is just like this herd of camels. And it was just like very unexpected. I almost just like did a double take. I'm like, am I seeing something right now? Like I'm 10 miles into this run. Like even though I'm staying hydrated, like my mind could be playing tricks on me. But believe it or not, they were real camels. And, uh, and I actually posted a video on um, our Facebook page. So if you wanna hear more about, kind of see like the up close and personal shots, definitely make sure you check that out. Let me see if I can get this. Got like a, a red rope. See that right there? I didn't want to get too close because camels have been known to uh, bite people's hair off. And as you can, well, right there, as you can tell, I have like, I have, I have quite the flow going on right now. Um, and, uh, and it was looking even more epic when I had my headband on and stuff. Um, and so I wanted to be cautious of that. Um, but I got some great footage and then actually once like I shut the camera off and I started running away this dude comes rolling up uh, rolling up on me on this ATV and uh, and I'm just like holy crap like what's about to go down like is this is this man about to like steal my kidney in the middle of the desert like I'm gonna be totally busted and uh, and he comes up and he's like he's like he, he could speak good English too so I was very impressed but he comes up and he's like hey like what's up like do, like, do you work around here? And I'm like, no, like I'm a student at the University of Dubai. Um, and then I asked him, I was like, are these your camels? And he's like, yeah, like I'm just taking them out here to graze and kind of hang out. And I was like, well, that's totally sick, dude. Like, would you mind if I took a picture of you? Uh, and that was my big excitement uh, for the day. That's sick, dude. Well, it sounds like you've been doing a lot of uh, running around in the desert. Tell us a little about the marathon that you ran in and and um, kind of tell us a little bit about your background with athletics. And give it to us straight, Matt, all right? Don't beat around the bush, okay? Let me give it to you straight, Taylor. Uh, probably two weeks ago, I got an email from a faculty member at the University of Dubai. Um, his name's Mustafa, really, really cool guy, has a great heart. Um, you can just tell he really loves all the students. Um, but he sent me a quick email and he said like, hey, um, Redempta, who's my study abroad advisor, told me that you like to jog in your free time. Um, a group of um, students are going, are going to be running in the um, Dubai Marathon 10K. Um, would you like to join us? And I was just like, once again, like, hell yeah, like, why not? I wanted up meeting up with kind of like the, their little team 
um, two days before the race, um, just kind of trained with them um, to get a feel for things. I have had already been training a lot on my own, so I felt well prepared. It was like, it was really sick how they had the uh, finish line set up. It was like huge stands on both sides and um, there's, you know, stands are just jam packed. It's like a Gator football game. Everyone is going hog wild. Like all the different nationalities were represented. Um, people kind of like had their country's flags and stuff. Um, I didn't see the USA flag, so I was a little bummed out. Um, but to be completely honest, my expectations were a little low. America's not really represented well here in Dubai. In fact, I've yet to meet another American. I'm all by my lonesome, so if you want to come out and visit me, drink a Pabst Blue Ribbon and just kind of listen to some Tom Petty. I guess Tom Petty's American. Please do. I, I definitely miss America. But needless to say, everyone's going hog wild in the stands. And I remember I was coming down, it was a, a 10 uh, kilometer race and I hit like uh, kilometer eight and I was like, okay, like I need to start picking up the pace. Like this is home stretch. My legs were already pretty tired because I had been running hard, but I just kind of wanted to have that mental toughness and that physical endurance to just push through. So I really started uh, kind of picking up the pace, hit the throttle, coming down the home stretch. And I see these stands and everyone's like cheering and it was just so like inspiring and invigorating and uh, I just like got into this all-out sprint and uh, just finished things really really strong I managed to blow a few kisses to the crowd and uh, and it was just so awesome and at the finish line everyone's like collapsing people are like throwing up in the bushes it was uh, it was getting kind of gnarly <laughs> but uh, but it was a lot of fun and also I have pictures um, of that posted on Facebook as well um, and also on Instagram um, and there's a little more information just with re regards to the race and some of the background and stuff um, so definitely uh, definitely go check that out um, a lot of, a lot of interesting content uh, like I'm really I'm really impressed that you could even run a 10k you know, regardless of where it is in the world like I, I think I speak for most people when I say that running a 10k is uh, it's quite an achievement, quite a feat. So um, I'm impressed. Um, you know that it's it's really interesting to think that you can be, you know, where you are right now, and we clearly see, you know, the, the insane amount of industry, the insane amount of uh, pursuit and like passion for for progress, making statements globally. I think can be a good summary of what we're seeing in the background. Um, and then, you know, probably. 10 miles away there can be a goat farmer you know or somebody like herding camels what i'm thinking is like how how has this huge city emerged you know in the last 100 years however long it's been i don't know too much about the history of dubai but um it seems like you know this country has just taken off in a fraction of the amount of time that it's taken the united states to build manhattan for paris to develop its massive um, city infrastructure, Berlin, to do its thing, London, you know, and you have all these ancient cities and it kind of makes sense, not ancient, literally ancient, but like really old in the classical era, um, that, that it's understandable that they have this industry, but in Dubai it's like, you know, they have, they have money, clearly, from, from the great commodity that won't be mentioned, but, um, you know, how, how, have, how is the, how have they managed to just just make this flourishing city um, and why has their motivation been to, to build this instead of you know solve poverty or all these things and, and nothing against the the planners of the UAE you know they're doing their thing you know that we don't we aren't much better in the in the west but uh, maybe you can speak to that a little bit why is making a statement globally such an important thing why why do you think that Dubai has has made that a goal yeah yeah, well, and I had the same exact question when I was coming here um, because I, as I mentioned in the previous episode, I did have somewhat of an understanding of Dubai, um, but at the same time, I was pretty unfamiliar um, just with the general history and, and also just kind of the more modern attitudes. Um, but 20 years ago, like none of this existed, like everything like that you're seeing right now like the Dubai fountains, the Burj Khalifa, uh, Khalifa, excuse me, and all these buildings in, in the background, like all of that was completely non-existent. Dubai was just this like small little 
um, fishing village. Um, and then these different like Emirati families came in and like they had a dream to really make like put Dubai on the map and make it just this iconic landmark that everyone would be able to recognize around the globe. Um, and so it's almost like they were consumed with this obsession to just kind of be the biggest and the best. And that's just like the, the attitude that continues to persist with everything that they do. And I was actually doing some research this morning um, on Business Insider. Um, and I found this one article and it was talking about um, just kind of this, this theme of, of Dubai wanting to, to be just recognizable um, around the world. And this little ep, uh, mm -hmm. excerpt from the art, uh, article, it says, in downtown Dubai, you can find the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa, which is right in the background, the largest salt shopping mall by land area, the Dubai Mall, which is right to my left, and the wo world's largest choreographed fountain show. And that's right behind me at the Dubai Fountain. Starting at 6 p.m. right now, it's 9 in the morning. So unfortunately, we won't have time to see that for this episode, but that could be uh, that could be some content for the future episode. But right behind me at the Choreographed Fountain, they do a fountain show that's totally sick. Um, it's also Dubai is also home to the world's largest man-made island. Um, that's the that's the Palm Island, and that's out in the Persian Gulf. I think that's like 15 to 20 minutes from where I am right now. And then here's the key to answer your question, Taylor. It says, um, and Dubai has publicly announced plans to build the world's largest airport, the world's largest uh, entertainment complex and the world's largest fer Ferris wheel, wheel over the course of the next 10 years. So like they have plans to continue to develop all this different infrastructure that's going to be just bigger than anything else in the world. And even a few few years ago, um, I believe it was back in um, October of 2014, um, Dubai was ousted by um, China. Um, China had uh, an observatory deck that winded up being taller than the Burj Khalifa. And then kind of once that happened, um, the uh, owner of the Burj Khalifa winded up um, opening up the 148th floor on the Burj Khalifa um, instead of the 125th, just so once again, it could say that Dubai um, had the tallest observatory deck in the world. And it's, so it just goes to show just like how much ambition um, the individuals and the government leaders have um, here in Dubai. Like all they want to do is just like have that claim of like, like there's no one that can do it better than us. And, uh, and you definitely kind of feel that um, just walking around here. And it's, it's not like it's uh, pretentious or, or arrogance. Um, I think it, it could definitely be misconstrued or seen that way. Um, but it's really like we just want to kind of we, like we have pride in where we live and we want um, our in infrastructure and like our land to really embody that. Um, and uh, and so it's, it's just like this really cool attitude that, you know, the Emiratis have. Wow. Well, I'm not going to pretend like I, I fully understand the context of what you're talking about. I think you answered my question eloquently, but it, it seems to me that in the 21st century, we're answering the question of what ought we to do with our lives, with our resources, with our wealth. And in different parts of the world, we answer that question different ways. And it just, it's, it's just so interesting to me that in, in this part of the world that you're in, in this time, uh, 2017, like this is the way we're answering that question. How do we live? The more that Dubai continues to grow and expand, the more jobs and financial and economic opportunities it provides not only to the people of Dubai, but also to neighboring nations. And that's something that I've noticed a lot as well. Um, even in kind of the suburb of Dubai where I live, like there's always this construction going on. And so there's constantly more and more workers coming in and being employed. Um, and actually I wrote, I wrote a short little um, article about this on the Facebook page too. Um, a lot of the working conditions for these workers, and most of them come from India, um, like the working conditions aren't very good and they don't get paid well. Um, and so there can definitely be improvements to that system. Um, but at the same time, 
um, the the Indians and and the other foreigners that come here to work, they're they're paid better than they do in their home countries. And so while we as Americans who have been very pr privileged and very blessed kind of see it as this negative thing, like they see it as something that's very positive because they're able to make enough money not just for themselves but also to uh, send money back home to support their families. Um, and so yes like there is this attitude of like we want to be the biggest and the best and uh and that can that can be where um kind of the the government and the the top families of the uae focus all of their energies but in an indir indirect way it's benefiting the population around them and it's bringing more notoriety um, and just more um, economic opportunity well, it's very it's a very diplomatic answer uh matthew and i i appreciate that but yeah it seems to me that that you're completely right you know this is <laughs> this is just capitalism working um working for self-interested individuals and some of those interested individuals have the wealth to build things that are going to be signposts you know for people to say hey that's a place that has prosperity and maybe i can go there and find um where i fit into that niche whether it be digging holes for for construction or if it's for me to engineer the next you know smartphone capacitor let's let's talk a little bit more about uh, Matthew Farina and his his experience so uh, we talked a little bit about bars and uh, some kind of the club scene you know we, we talked a little about how alcohol um, is is actually present um, we talked about um, how just a few minutes away from where you live where you just jog uh, your daily on your daily jog you see you know camel farmers that's completely completely new and interesting to me um, and then we talked a little bit about the vision of the city and how you've you've been able to perceive it so far not without talking about your marathon as well which again I applaud you for that what are you looking forward to I know that one thing I would be thinking is I want to go check out that biggest man-made island but what what are you what are you anticipating doing in the next couple of weeks oh yeah the uh the Palm Island is definitely going to be a must-have. Um, I'll definitely uh, be going there, getting some great footage um, and some great content, um, so you guys will be able to check that out. Um, but one of the big things for me um, that I'm always kind of eager to pursue is just the people. Um, there's so many people to just kind of interact with. There's so many stories to hear, um, and so I'm constantly just introducing myself um, and just trying to get a better sense of, of people's lives and their backgrounds and, and also their futures. Um, but something else that I'm looking at too is going skydiving. Um, that is would be that would truly be a once in a lifetime experience because it's not every day that you get to jump out of a plane above the uh, Persian Gulf. Um, so I'm looking into that. I actually met uh, a guy the other day um, at the University of Dubai. Um, who said he might be able to get me a discount. So that would be totally awesome. Uh, save a little bit of money. Um, so I'm gonna continue to look into that. And um, from, from the research that I've done and from what people have told me, um, during that whole kind of skydiving experience, they take like a full video that they wind up sending you. Um, so that would be really awesome as well. Once again, Taylor, you and the rest of humanity could live vicariously through me. Fantastic, man. Well, that, that sounds like a lot to be looking forward to. And I know that while you're doing all that, you're going to be maintaining outstanding collegiate marks. Um, I'm looking forward to, to living vicariously through you. I think for right now, I just want to, um, you know, wish you a, a good week. And we'll definitely be praying for you back in, back in the States keep you safe and everything like that this episode has been a been a blast and like it's just so like fun to do this like even this morning when i was waking up like i didn't feel very well i was tired i kind of just wanted to go back to bed but once i got out here and we started started dialoguing on all this and just getting to like share all these different experiences i just feel like a completely different person and so i'm i'm so thankful for this opportunity and i'm just i'm i'm really looking forward to our future conversations Definitely, man. I felt the same way. It was like, it's about to be midnight where I am. And, uh, you know, usually I'm fine staying up till midnight, but I was just kind of just watching the office and uh, writing some stuff. And then next thing I know, it was like about to be midnight. And I was like, all right, let's do this. Everybody who's listening and watching, make sure that you uh, go check out the Instagram and the Facebook page. 
of both of that both of those handles are tri dubai 17 and there's nothing but fun on there there's nothing but just great vibes i think at some point we're going to be talking about uh this guy i can't remember donald trump we're going to be talking about this guy and maybe we'll get some perspective yeah i think it'd be really interesting to see what the perception of old donnie trumpet is uh there and in uh, the land of the, the truly free. <laughs> All right, man. Well, it's been a pleasure, as always. Uh, again, check out that Facebook page, Instagram. Uh, and see you next time. All right, take it easy, guys.